Hey guys, welcome to Mr. Maple Show. I'm Matt. We got a really special episode for you today. Hey guys, I'm Tim. Smash that like button. I'm excited as a kid in a candy store out here this morning. We've got an amazing walkthrough for you. Remember, we're MrMaple.com, a small family business. We ship directly to your door and we do over a thousand varieties of Japanese maples. So if you like this type of content, we'd appreciate it if you shopped with us on MrMaple.com. Guys, I got chill bumps. We're on hollowed ground for Japanese maples right now. This, this is really where it all started. We just drove down Maplewood Lane, not Maplewood Knoll East Flat Rock. We're here in Oregon at the original home of J.D. Veritrees. So, I, I mean, I've literally got chill bumps saying that. It is a very special place, especially if you're a Japanese maple collector. Uh, we also owe such a debt of gratitude to J.D. Veritrees and the work that started right here. Guys, we're talking about Maplewood Nursery. This was the name of J.D. Veritrees. I'm literally Veritrees. choked up. <laughs> I know, I know. J J.D. Veritrees, wrote the book on Japanese maples. He made Japanese maples popular all over the world through his work and compiling all the information on Japanese maples. We wouldn't be at the level where we're at today if it wouldn't have been for J.D. Veritree's work. And being able to come here and film at his garden, and it's June of 2023, we're able to enjoy some of the spring color still on some of these plants. It just lights my heart up to be able to bring this for y'all. I mean, special thanks to Stuart Wilson, the current owner of the home, for allowing us to come here and film. Uh, wanna let you know, this is the historic home of J.D. Veritrees. Uh, we're gonna be taking you through this. One disclaimer is, uh, Stuart Wilson had to maintain the collection here. So some trees are trimmed back to keep them in their location. So some trees have been trimmed for historical purposes. Uh, I think it's a really special collection of Japanese maples. Most of these trees are the trees that J.D. Veritrees planted on this grounds himself. There's still a ton of really special trees. You're not gonna wanna miss this one. Let's get into it. Let's check out the grounds here at J.D. Veritree's home. Guys, there are so many amazing trees here in J.D. Veritree's personal collection. We're not going to show you every single one of them today, but we're going to show you some highlights that really caught our eye. There's a ton of cool plants. Check this out behind me here. Here we have Acer Shurisalum on Microphylum. This is an amazing Shurisalum. You don't see much on the nursery tray anymore. It's got real round foliage. The leaves sometimes curl a little bit upwards. I mean, an amazing Acer Shurisalum. All right, guys, check this out. Pretty good spring color still going on on this giant Uki Gumo back here. Also known as the floating clouds maple, that tree is just electric white. It's amazing to see the trees in this garden that J.D. Veritrees planted himself and seeing them here still, you know, 50 years later, almost 50, sometimes 60 years later out here in the landscape. Guys, there's some massive mature lace leaves through here. So many crazy shapes. Now, Stuart Wilson, who's owned this home after, is also a big uh, bonsai guy, so you have some great shapes on some of these plants as well. This is Acer Palmatum Dissectum Tamukiyama. Selection by Kobayashi Mumiji in, made its way from Japan over here to Veritree's home, and you know, it's made it all around the nursery trade, all around the world now. Okay, come in here, check this out. J.D. Veritree's Shishigashira. I mean, how do you get better than that? Check out this super old Shishigashira. This thing is incredible. I've actually seen it in fall color when I visited here with the Maple Society. Really cool specimen to see. Yeah, Shishigashira, a classic Japanese maple, the lion's head. Many of y'all may have one in your garden, you know, and a lot of those may have been in the nursery trade through this tree right here as well. Amazing to see this kind of history. Oh my goodness.
Guys, check out these lace sleeves he has here by his driveway. Guys, we've got a Crimson Queen, a Veritas, a Crimson Queen, and a Waterfall. And just lined out with different colors. You've got different colors in the spring and different colors in the fall as well. I will say we were at the Oregon State Archives this week with Talon Buckholtz. I read a lot of J.D. Veritree's personal notes, and he said that he finds no distinction between Veritas and Waterfall. So there you have it. Guys, amazing plants. It's cool that he was even comparing them here in his, his nursery just like we do at ours. Let's check this thing out, keep going. Oh my gosh, this area is gorgeous. Guys, check this out. I think what we have here over this waterfall is Aka Shigatatsu Sawa. Guys, that's a classic reticulated Japanese maple. Gives some nice pink reticulation in the early spring, kind of a pink white. It's a slow growing dwarf. We're looking at a tree that's over 50 years old here. It's amazing. This is one of the plants he decided to put over this water feature near his, right at the, near his front door. I mean, this is an amazing specimen. You rarely ever see Aka Shigatatsu Sawa this size. This thing is amazing. The Samaras are really lighting up. They're making a bouquet here over top of this koi pond. There's so much going on in this garden. Come on up here and check this out. There is an Esk Sunset, and I checked the label. It's still labeled Esk Sunset, not Eskimo, right behind me back here. Awesome tree, guys. Acer Pseudoplatinus Esk Sunset. I mean, rarely seen at this size. This one's here in J.D. Veritree's collection. You know, you can stand under this and get those salmon pinks going on. The, the foliage you can see from afar. It is amazing to stand next to an Esk Sunset with this kind of size on it. Guys, we got a special tree behind us right now. This is Acer Palmatum Koto Ito Kamachi. Yeah, I think this could be the one lost from the first edition. It's a lot like fairy hair with that elongated foliage. This is a very rarely seen linear lobulum with uh, you know some of the daintiest foliage you'll ever find. Planted here right in the front flower bed in front of J.D. Veritree's home. Guys, this is one of the very few Japanese maples that was accredited to being introduced by J.D. Veritree himself. I mean, this is a tree that you don't see in the nursery trade much anymore. Oh my gosh. And extremely, extremely rare. Let's see what other treasures we can find. Oh, wait, wait, check out uh, Stuart Wilson's bonsai collection over here.
Wow, check this one out. I think this might be red filigree lace. Guys, we were just at the Oregon State Archives and we saw paperwork with J.D. Veritree saying that he got some of the very first red filigree <laughs> lace from Isley Nursery. Uh, John Isley had given it to him and they had lots of correspondence back and forth. Detailed agreements. Detailed, detailed agreements about red filigree lace. Amazing to see this part of history right here in Veritree's garden. Oh, man, let's check out this garden. There's so much in here. Oh my gosh, as we go by guys, pan up into this S. This is crazy. <laughs> More Leonard Loblums through here. What's this one? Koto no Ito. Koto no Ito. Got another Leonard Loblum over here. What did he pair that well with? Red Pygmy. <laughs> guy knows how to pair his maples. Oh wow, I'm seeing some good variegated plants back in here. Check out this variegated snake bark back here. He's protecting this one a little bit from the hot afternoon sun. It's actually getting some, some protection from these two Mino Yatsabusas beside it, which is crazy. <laughs> this is a variegated snake bark. I've seen it sold as Albo Lumbatum. I've also seen the exact same plant sold as Hatsuyuki. And here he has this one labeled as Hatsuyuki, but this one's such an old specimen. Again, many of these trees that we're looking at are 40 to 50 years old, some even older than that. And these things are spectacular seeing such old trees here in the landscape. Now, one of my favorite features that's rarely talked about with snake barks are these dangling tassel samaras. You get these little tassels that kind of come down from there. I think it gives it an even extra ornamental quality. And I think it's so cool that the seeds all make this one little chain together. And these seeds can often get more of a red color as the fall approaches. Right now they're more green, but these things are outstanding. And even before those seeds come in, flowers are there and so you get a unique interest on a snake bark maple. Man, this is incredible. Uh, these Mino behind you are actually insane too. These things already look like bonsais. <laughs> no kidding. I like how they've got all those knots and bumps all across the base of this plant. I mean, this thing is insane on these bumps <laughs> that we've got here happening. Like these knots, I mean, that's something you only really get on some trident maples and especially Mino Yetzibusas the one that's most prominent for it. It's almost like a lacily form of a trident maple. And seeing some that are like 50 years old, I mean, you can really see the age here with these trunks. Dude, what do we got going on up here? I don't know, but I'm going to start looking up a little bit more. I think uh, we got a batwing maple that's like ancient. I think we do too. It looks like a pictum subspecies mono, that huge batwing maple leaf. I mean, that's insane. He's got an acer mono that size. I mean, oh my we, gosh. we saw these in Japan, but the ones we saw were hundreds of years old. This one's probably, you know, in that 50, 60 year range. I don't think this one's Usugumo. I think it's a straight species, but Oh my gosh, at that size, that's insane. <laughs> We've got a reticulatum over here. Variegated trident here. Maybe Waco Nishki. Hoo hoo, my goodness. Wow. 
All right, guys, check this out. We're here in a propagation area. Can you imagine how many Japanese maples got their start right here? Uh, we're here just down by the river at JD Veritree's place. And my goodness, guys, I mean, this is where it all starts right here for Japanese maples in the United States. There were people growing them before this, but nobody was popularizing them and getting Japanese maples out to the masses and talking about them to get everybody fired up through his books like JD Veritree's. Guys, this is insane that this is where the passion and love got spread. Right. This is the propagation area. Crazy to know that this is where many of these Japanese maples, you know, Koto Itokamashi might have first gotten grafted here. Oregon Fern might have first gotten grafted here. Autumn Moon might have started made to start right here on these benches. Let's go see what this area is behind the house. Wow, there's some cool stuff in here too. Check out this japonicum in the container here. Wow, what a view here too with the river. I like what he did here. He's got Osakazuki right here, and I see Hogoku planted right here. And you wonder if at some other time he had planted Ichijioji as a trifecta in here. He does mention that being a really good pairing <laughs> right here by the river. Oh, I'm gonna peek around the corner. I see a Shishigashira and an Ojishi. That's pretty killer. Man, check out the view. This is a huge snake bark maple we're walking under. Oh my gosh. And here he's got a Chitosiyama in a container right here. And that thing <laughs> looks old. Wow. Man. Oh man, this garden is incredible. You really can't beat this for historical perspective of Japanese maples.
Man, this, there's just Japanese maples everywhere in this garden. There's a tricolor beach here this big. I mean, you almost feel like you're rediscovering things here. It's crazy. <laughs> Dude, check out that Goshiki Shidari over there. Man, I think he's got some good color on it still too. Here's a Sumagaki. Nice green lace leaf over here. Here's a garnet that's getting a little shade, but this thing's Got a little more sunlight, might be a little brighter. This was a Dantsugi when we came through, but it's actually two trees. They're just so big. I love how he planted all these lace leaf specimens together in this area. Mm -hmm. It really gives it something, you know, special. And you, this twist and curls on these old specimens, it really shows you what a lace leaf can do in, you know, 40 years. Yeah, it's crazy. Matt, check this out. Oh man, it's a, a Acer Surstate of Monroe back there. Yeah. I mean, nope. guys, we just went and read letters that he wrote to Mrs. Monroe after Dr. Monroe passed away. The Jenny Veertrees love this plant. I saw so many correspondence where he was sending this to everywhere he could in Oregon. He sent it to a lot of the parks. So if you see one out there, it may be the, you know, some grafted from the original. If you see this trait again, it's likely the cultivar. And this is a lace leaf form of circinatum that Dr. Monroe passed, that he'd found. When Dr. Monroe passed away, J.D. Veertrees even gifted two to Mrs. Monroe as a tribute to Dr. Monroe, who he said was an amazing person. So really cool to see this piece of history out there after we were just reading personal letters about it. All right, guys, we're going into the woods. We're gonna see what we can find. This area back here is a little thicker and a lot of the trees are closer together. Uh, let's go see what we can find back here. It's pretty interesting. We're walking past an actual linear right here on this side. Oh, South guys, Chica. check this out. Hey, check this out. This is an Alpenweiss named by our friend Bob Baltzer. The eye candy and so many other great plants are in this lineage from Alpenweiss. And uh, pretty cool to see JD had one here in the original garden. Yeah, the original story goes is a guy was collecting seed all around Oregon and growing them as like rootstock. And Bob Baltzer found this as a chance seedling from those and it has way more white than your typical Higashiyama. That's really cool. Oh, check this out. What are these dwarfs back here? Guys, check out this old Acer Palmatum Kiyohime. This tree has sort of been grown in the shade, so it's got a little more upright habit to it, and it's been trimmed so it has stays in its place, but this plant is amazing. I mean, look at the branches down low. It's got all this amazing contorting branches going different directions. Classic, classic selection. I mean, you feel like you're in the Japanese maple forest here. I feel like I'm in Japan, except Japan of cultivars. It's pretty cool. Guys, we're standing here with some amazing dwarf selections. I'm standing next to another Hime type. Right here, I'm standing next to Kuru Aijishi. That's got that cupped up foliage. I mean, that's that dwarf selection of Okushimo. The name means crazy lion. I mean, to know that J.D. Veritrees had these specimens, you know, that long ago is just insane. I didn't even know Kuru Aijishi was in the United States that long. I could tromp around back here all day. Let's go check out this Makawa type. Guys, check this one out. This is Makawa Yatsubusa. And then over here beside us, beside Tim, is Shishi Yatsubusa. So you can see Shishi is lower and wider than Makawa, hidden back here in the Japanese maple forest. Now guys, I think both of these would be a lot denser if they had a little more sunlight, but they're getting a lot of shade from all these other Japanese maples around them. I mean, Shishi Yatsubusa, they say the seeds come upwards a little bit, 
We've been growing this in full sun. The leaf cups upward a little bit more on Chicha Yatabusa than Makawa Yatabusa. But you see them side by side here in the area. And you see, again, J.D. Veritree's comparing the two, trying to learn the differences between the two selections. I'm looking up through the sunlight and I'm realizing we're actually standing under an Usagumo. This is crazy back here. Guys, it's neat to see the hidden treasures back there. There's so many cool plants down this pathway. I mean, check out this Trompenberg. Wow. It's this old tree up here. It's got like Spanish moss hanging in it. Uh, this is just insane seeing these old specimens. The lichen on the Sojishi and just that whole forest. Oh my gosh, it definitely gives you Japan vibes. You don't even see Ojishi in the nursery trade that much. The male lion, that's, that's super uncommon. Let's go check out the main area over here. Nice filigree right here. There's some really cool plants in this area too. Guys, this is a really old Eritama. Eritama is a real slow growing compact dwarf Japanese maple. I mean, we're talking two to three feet in 10 years. We're looking at a 40, 50 year old specimen. This is just crazy. So many cool plants in here. I mean, this garden's just amazing. We're here on a kind of slightly overcast day, so it's perfect for viewing this. Check out the Hoshiodori. Wow, that thing is huge. I mean, that's every bit of 20 feet right now. That thing is insane, still showing some good yellow variegation. It's popping off all up here, popping off over through there. And it's, that's crazy. Pretty nice Benny Maiko right here. Seeing some Japonicum leaves shining through the back too.
Guys, thanks for joining us on this tour of the historic grounds here of J.D. Vare Trees. Guys, it's been insane getting to see this nursery and these grounds for Japanese maples. I mean, J.D. Vare Trees himself planted many of these Japanese maples all around his garden. And it's insane seeing trees after 40, 50 years they've been in the ground. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are pieces of history. Special thanks to Stuart Wilson for letting us film here today. Uh, just an incredible experience. I hope you enjoyed this look at a true piece of Japanese maple history and a starting point for so many things that really popularized Japanese maples in America. Guys, this has been an amazing event for me and Matt. I hope you all have enjoyed it just as much. You know, if you really enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We put out daily content on Japanese maples and this, this was simply amazing today. Oh man, how do you beat this? Take care, God bless, and have a great day.